Hey folks! Hello there, Packer Nation, and welcome to another edition of the Absolute Packer Podcast. We're on number 52 here, and uh, we are deep into the offseason, uh, for the, going into the 2019 season. Well, I'm not exactly sure how many weeks we are in a training camp, but uh, it's, uh, it's going full tilt. We've had one preseason game, which we'll uh, go over tonight, but uh, before we got up into all the good stuff, I'd like to introduce my cohorts we have elliot christensen woohoo so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. that was my those were my fans well, that was <laughs> uh, that was that was too boisterous tone it down uh and we have jeremy Howell. what's up man <gasps> see yeah he's got it a little bit more subdued. that's my fan club yeah i hear you your fans are better your fans are better what can i say <laughs> Okay, so uh, hopping right in, uh, we had our first preseason game, and it was courtesy of the Houston Texans, and we got a win, 28 to 26, mm-hmm. which to me means squadouche. It doesn't really mean anything. Uh, I mean, it's nice to have a win uh, with the new regime, but I don't know. What the heck does it really mean? And look, I, I, I love, I always have to put these, you know, full disclosures out there. And it's slightly embarrassing, but I have to still do it. Um, I didn't even watch the game. I had prior commitments, and I run this podcast, but I apparently run it by the seat of my pants because sometimes it feels like I, I'm, I'm not watching the games I should be, or I don't know how this always happens. And I swear to God, once the regular season comes, I will be watching every game. <laughs> but right now, you know, I'm in charge of a podcast um, with you guys, and I, I've watched maybe 50% of the games. So I don't know what what exactly that means. Um, not uh, Thank you just stop demoted. I think not you, I positive. Think demoted. Not positive. But I have to put the full disclosure out there because if you guys start bringing up things and going, "What did you think about this stuff?" The other will say, "Well, I didn't see the game." <laughs> that is the beauty of the internet and and having other blogs out there. Obviously, you can pour over and, and see what's going on there. Twitter, um, you know, I go on Twitter religiously during the live events to do that. But at the same time. Shame on me. I have to do a hell of a lot better. You know, Elliot, I think we should invest in a Christmas present for Andy. Get him the NFL pass. Because, mm-hmm. honestly, I think you'd be able to watch the game whenever you want, when, at your convenience, and then you, you can't use the excuse that I didn't watch it. That's a good point where I'm like, I'm stuck in the 1990s where it's like, I have to have a large TV in front of me to watch this game no matter where I am. I can't take this with me. But I have a TV in my pocket. It's called a smartphone. Mm. Oh, jeez. But I don't know. know. I mean, so the only thing that I guess I I would have commented on about the game really was, I mean, I'm sure Jeremy will bring things up that uh, I'll go, oh, yeah, that. But um, I actually thought that our... uh, I mean, from the looks of it, and it's super hard because you don't know what the other defense is showing and you don't know how good they are or anything. Right. But I felt like the, our, our backup quarterbacks played surprisingly well, uh, (laughs) because I expect nothing. (laughs) They're, they're a dumpster fire at backup quarterback. They really, I mean, I mean, I, I, so I seriously expected nothing. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and that that's really it. That's all I really it was preseason. It was the first one. I really I don't know. I don't I um I don't I don't I don't really have anything else of note to really say. And I'm sure Jeremy has a whole slew of things, but I do have one stat here. Sorry, real quick. Uh yeah. It's not in the notes here, but I, I saw it uh, the other day and it was uh LaFleur came out at the press conference up and he said he counted twenty four missed tackles. So that's uh, if you, you know, when it comes to stats, you know, 24, you want a positive number with things like on offense. But when you have 24 missed tackles on a defense, that is not good. That I do know. I may not have yeah. seen the game, but I know 24 missed tackles is very bad. Yeah. So I saw a bunch of his comments, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And but but I mean, that's what those to me. To me, that's what those games are for, is to identify those problems. And hopefully that's his job. And so he's saying, 
okay, I see this problem. I have identified this problem. And now this problem will be corrected. <laughs> oh, it's McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy never worked on tech. They never worked on tech. But it, but it's hard okay. to it's hard to with the CBA. I mean, they're they're only allowed so many yeah. contact drills, and th- yeah. that's that's what they have to follow, you know. And yeah, right. it, it sucks because you know you have games like the last game where I mean it was like we were tackling air and ghosts out there, um, but. I don't take I don't put much merit into it. I mean, we 25 okay. players who were um, who are probably going to be starters or heavy contributors this year were held out of the game. So we saw backups and fringe players or guys that are going to be cut um, yep. playing a lot of minutes out Pizza there. Pizza delivery drivers, UPS men, you need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you what know. they cut. That's like the, the running joke is that a lot of these right. guys are going to be, you know, they're, they're future gonna be Vikings. Gonna be, <laughs> oh, nice! And, and it could be bears too, and I'll Zinger. get I'll get to that in a little bit. Nice. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I can nitpick a little bit on the quarterbacks. Um, Deshaun Kaiser his touchdown pass to Darius Shepard was way too high and put the the receiver at peril of being hit yeah. heavily, and he did get hit. Yeah. Um, that, that ball has to be, you know, it, it had to be a little bit higher because he had to get over a defender, but. For the defender to actually, or for the uh, the offensive player to actually jump so high to get it, it was overthrown. Um, so I, I nitpick on those types of things. Uh, for me, um, I saw a middle linebacker that we have high hopes for, and Ty Summers, uh, our seventh round. Yeah, um, I heard good things about him too. After he had a great play on a on a straight up running play where he juked an offensive lineman who was coming to him, and made the tackle. So he he juked to the right. The lineman was coming towards the right, and he just juked him out and then went underneath and then caught the running back for like a three-yard gain. It was in the first quarter, um, a really a heady play, Somebody, some, something that you know a, a good linebacker like Luke Keekley would do. Um, and, I mean, he was all over the field. I mean, he's not the fastest guy. He's not going to he's not gonna, you know, knock your socks off with any speed or anything like that, but he has football smarts, and I see it out there, um, and I saw it. Last Friday or last Thursday, it was phenomenal. Um, so that's a, a good thing to come out of that game. Uh, the 24 tackles, I think that seemed to be low. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was that bad. Um, yeah, the, the I hear you. general was that bad. But um, the positives, I saw, I saw a lot of team speed. I saw guys out there that were flying to the ball, uh, which we haven't seen in a very long time. I see a running back. Um, Dexter Williams, who uh, was drafted in the sixth round this year from Notre Dame, I see him being a. He may man, be a steal. When when he finds a hole, holy cow, that guy just zooms through. Um, you know, he could be a steal. Uh, Rashawn Gary, I think you know everybody was watching him pretty uh, heavily. Um, the the one get off I I see of him was he was phenomenal off the ball. I mean, he was very quick. His four five eight speed or whatever it is, it showed out there. Right right now. He has to harness that speed and be able to play at football speed. And um, when he gets engaged with with offensive tackles or linemen, uh, he has to be able to get off of them because right now it's he's just he's he's a one he's trick a fire, Tony. I bet he just fire, goes. He's a fireball. Um, yeah. So they have to use him in positions where they can utilize that uh, eagerness and speed. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but overall, I mean, yeah, the um, I don't hold the tackles too highly just because of the fact a lot of these players are going to be backups and, and uh, went on and so forth. Um, but the quarterbacks, um, I, I think we have a really big weakness there. I think uh, um, if Aaron goes down during the regular season, they're fucked. Just just they're being hurt, yeah. hurting big time. You know, yeah, I agree. Uh, going back to the linebacker, Ty Summers. I mean, it, there's an interesting segue there. You said he was all over the field and played well. They might need him because, Huh? Oren Burks, who is a second-year player, um, he tore his pectoral muscle. They confirmed it uh, during the game. Uh, I think it was either the next day or something like that. But he, that's a – I think they said it's a potential six-month injury. I mean, if that's the case, he's out for the year. At best, right. he could come off that, what, early injured reserve or something like that. At best. But I don't think they'd, they'd do that. So, you know, they have um, Blake Martinez, who I would say is solid. Um, let's not get too excited. He's solid. But then they got, man, they, they kind of needed him in that respect. And the mm-hmm. Packers, you know, it's been a while since they've had really good inside linebacker play, a long time. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I doubt they're going to go out and get a veteran. I don't know, really know a whole lot of who's available. I think they're going to try and go with what they got and just pray that Martinez <laughs> holds up. Um, but, yeah, that, that was the one injury, I believe, from the game. I mean, there was a couple of ding, you know, maybe some sore you know, hammies or something like that from other players. But that one, um, you know, you know, I don't know how good Burks really was is kind of where I'm, I'm heading. I mean, he was he's, he was a second-year player, so it's not like he's a you know, five-year vet. But, um, you know, he was kind of disappointing last year. They had a lot of athleticism, but he was getting washed out everywhere. So it's going to be interesting to see where inside linebacker goes. Um, and when you talked about uh, offensive linemen, the only starter who played, I think, was Lane Taylor, and that tells you something. Um, you know, they held out everybody else except for him. So his job is, I think, is on the line. That Elton, am I saying his name right? Elton Jenkins? Elton, like Elton John. Elton, okay. Oh, gee, is silent. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that kind of tells me everything you know, you need to know about Lane Taylor. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably, you know, the first sign of, of slippage. You know, they're probably going to, you know, his job's on the line. Which is fine. I mean, this is competition. All this, all this part. That's what this. That's what all this stuff is. You know, I got to mention the preseason, Lafleur and all of them. They're looking at the bottom third of the roster like, like a hawk. You know, the top two thirds. I'm sure they're looking at, but a lot of the starters aren't even playing. So you take those out. The middle of the roster is kind of set. So it's that bottom third. I got to mention they are just really pouring over. And you are seeing a lot of third stringers going against fourth stringers and stuff like that. Guys that are never going to start. But they're depth at best, so it's all part of the process. And, and we've got a brand new regime, so we're trying to see how the whole machine runs, right? Right. Um, yeah. I, I'm, t- I'm torn with Orrin Books. Um, I think schematically it's a huge loss uh, because I think ideally they want to play two linebackers in all three downs. Um, and I think that's where not having him on the field right now, he is – you know, Blake Martinez has a really tough time covering anybody with speed. He's just not a, a get up and go guy. Um, He's an old school linebacker. Right, right. And, and Burks was a sideline to sideline guy. He, um, so far, he's really, really, really bad in the run game. I mean, he gets locked up with, uh, with blockers and he, he's done. Um, but where he could excel is, is covering running backs and, and tight, tight ends, ends and over the, over the flat and stuff like that. And I think that's where Patton had his, you know, had him pegged. Um, so now you're going to have probably three safeties being used more so often to cover up that deficiency there. And uh, when you're going up against physical teams like Dallas, that could be a huge detriment to uh, being able to stop the Ezekiel Elliott's, those physical running teams like Dallas. So, um, you know, schematically it hurts. Player-wise, I mean, it hurts, but like... <sighs> You know, you, you said it. Uh, we have Ty Summers and Curtis Bolton. Um, uh, Curtis Bolton's an undrafted free agent out of Oklahoma. Undrafted, you know. Um, yeah. If he becomes something, I, I will be thoroughly surprised. Um, but I just don't see it, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I like you said, their bodies. we're thin. They're bodies. We're thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With their bodies, right. Um, what about Josh Jones? What the heck? I mean, is he a safety? Is he what – is, what is his – I mean, he's already on thin ice, too. Mm-hmm. I got to think of making the team. But with Burks going down, does that open him up for any increased playing time around linebacker? I don't know. Is he a safety? Is he a – what is he? <laughs> he's <laughs> – yeah, what is he? Um, he's, not a, he's not a strong safety. Um, he's more of a free safety that can roam and make plays. Uh, but I think where Pettin wants to use him is kind of like uh, a dime linebacker, um, so to speak. And so he's got to shit or get off the pot now, basically. Well, with with Burke's injury, I think that helps him. Um, yeah. I think with Burke's there, I think really he's on the hot seat. But right now he's on the hot seat. He just needs to make plays and do something and, and be healthy. Um, that's the other thing too is health with him. Little 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 nagging injuries that just kind of you know kill him. Um, so I don't know what's what that's going to entail with him. Um, Speaking of nagging injuries, Kevin King has got that damn hamstring again. They're saying it's. Um, precautionary because it's preseason, but that guy, his whole history is it, when he was drafted, it was his shoulder, right? Uh-huh. And then it's been hamstrings, nothing but hamstrings after that. So 
sorry, that's a red flag to me. Um, it was a red flag when we drafted him. Um, that's why teams were very shy to even venture to drafting him in the first round. Did Ted draft him or good against? I can't. Uh, Ted did. That was yeah. his last draft. He Seven. that was that was the pick that he traded out of the first round when TJ Watt was there. Oh, um, wow. Traded out to the uh, beginning of the second round. We were the first pick in the second round the next day, and we picked Kevin King. So, wow. was that the same draft TJ Watt where he took Vince Beagle in the later yes. round? And Vince yes. Beagle's out of the league. No, he's with New Orleans. What's he doing? Uh, cooking, he's cooking dinner. Backup special teams. He recovered a fumble um, in the in their last game uh, <laughs> against the Vikings. So, Jesus, man. Well, I mean, the draft, the draft is kind of fickle, but that's, uh, that's actually a pretty decent segue into the next uh, section here. Um, unless you guys got other stuff to talk about preseason. I mean, not really. I mean, the audition preseason game is the third one, right? That's supposedly the mm-hmm. mo- most important one. If my mm-hmm. memory right. Yeah. Yeah. Before- yeah. Start. Starters will play next game. They might play a series, but their third one is kind of the dress rehearsal. Yeah. Um, and the so that's the one game, to look out for. The fourth game is usually the one where they're they're playing everybody that's on the fringe. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Um, so yeah, you're talking about the draft and and bad picks. I mean, Jason Spriggs, uh, left tackle, heir apparent. I don't know if it's heir, uh, left tackle or right tackle, but swing tackle, something whatever. He um, he got cut with wave with injury settlement, I guess. And uh, man, you talk about a busted pick. Um, and you know it's. He was he's an interesting one from the standpoint of I mean he looked really good in college and he handled guys like Joey Bosa in I mean he was great in college you know Ted traded two picks to get up there and get him in the second round and he looked like I don't want to say can't miss but you look like at worst he's going to be a solid starter right mm-hmm. you know his ceiling is probably a pro bowl or whatever all pro but at worst man he was the minute he got to the league he just fell apart and he which is weird because he's very athletic. You know, he played in the Big Ten, um, and he handled um, speed rushers and whatnot really well, but he just fell apart when he got to the NFL. And it's, I mean, it's sad, disappointing, but um, it's, it's. I made a note, you know, a sub-note within the notes that basically said he kind of proves how fickle the draft is because at the time, I don't think anybody – on any team, any GM or whatever would have said that was, you know, a reach or whatever. That was a good, that was a good pick. Right. And he's, you know, he's probably going to get picked. Maybe he already did get picked up somewhere, but barely lasted two years, you know, and it's just, so. It goes to show you that there is more to the league than being physically gifted. You have no to be doubt. gifted up here as well. I think I touched this on one of your posts in, the, in our APP Facebook page. Um, when you are able to let bad plays go, uh, you can be a very good player because you're not overanalyzing and thinking about it. That's what Jamon Moore is going through right now. Um, yeah. You know, so I think when, with Spriggs, he was put in there pretty early his rookie year. He was actually playing right guard um, for uh, TJ Lane, who was hurt there for a, a couple games. Um, and he got beat. And I don't think he took it very well. I don't think the team... Um, you know, they didn't do him any guys. favors, right? No, no. You know, so I. But here's a deal. Like I said, um, then I think this is what led to his demise. Is is he just could not take the, the 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 anguish of doing poorly on a play. Like he just didn't know how to get over it. Yeah. Um, and I think that was uh, probably the the most um, important part uh, of his stature that just failed. Like he just went down the tubes after his rookie year, and and from then he was just trying to recover, but he could never do it, you know? And that's the thing. When he did come in um, last year, he got fucking, I don't know, I'm cursing like I said, like I hope stop. <laughs> he, um, I mean, he got, he was a turnstile. He got whooped bad. He didn't get beat a little bit. He got beat, he got beat like a drum almost every time he came in and even spot duty. It's like he was a liability to have in there. Um, so he wasn't even, you know, he obviously wasn't even good enough for depth. That's how the, yeah. this, his second year when he started um, in 2017, his his uh, when we were the first year that we didn't make the playoffs, he started the last few games and he was actually playing good football. He was actually starting against the Vikings in the second from last game and he dislocated his kneecap. 
Um, it just it was a, a culmination of things, you know, whether it was an injury, whether it was just not doing well. I mean, the guy had poor luck. He really did. Um, yeah. And he just didn't have the mental fortitude to get over it all. Yeah, I remember when they did plug him in last year in some spot duty. I think it was it might have been it might have been at left and right tackle a couple times. But the minute he came in, he got beat. I mean, within a second. Boom. And Rodgers was sacked. It was like guaranteed. It was really stunning to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, not much else to say there in that, you know, I hope he can figure his career out. But that was a waste, you know, that was a wasted pick, you know, just a bad pick. You're hoping for an heir apparent there and you get nothing in two years. Right, and they drafted him to be Brian Bulaga's heir apparent, and yep. uh, here we are, and Brian Bulaga is just hanging on by a thread, no you know, <laughs> literally, and uh, we still don't have a right tackle after Bulaga likely leaves after this season. Is this the last year of his contract, anyway? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'd be stunned if they resign him, um, even to a, a marginal deal, just because his health is. I mean, his he basically they got to give him. You know, he, he misses. He's bound to miss. You know, it seems like a decent amount of snaps per game. <laughs> just he's missed because. he's missed half the practices in training camp just to yeah. just to save his body. Yeah, um, I hear him. That hurts. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I got for for Spriggs. Again, I I don't want to say it was um, you know stunning, no. but um, just disappointing. I guess more than anything. So yeah. now on to you know more injuries, if you will, but. Uh, Peck, both starting running backs were injured for a good chunk there uh, during training camp. Uh, Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams still hurt. He's not practicing. Hamstring, I think. Um, soft tissue injuries. Man. Um, Aaron Jones was hurt, and I think it was hamstring too. But he actually started practicing today, full pads and all that. So I guess he's back. But, um, you know, when you look at on paper what they looked like, uh, Jones and the depth chart there and uh, Jamal Williams going, that's pretty good. And then before you know it, they're both gone. You know, like, thank God you got Dexter Williams. But then um, when you look at um, Dexter Williams, he's, he looks great as a running back. But when he's that, that pass option I've been reading about, he's been dropping the ball like crazy. And that's why LaFleur is giving him, like, he's passive aggressively, you know, kind of really getting on him when he's talking about how he's doing because he's running the ball great. But he can't catch anything. And LaFleur no. really wants, you know, uh, his running backs to be able to catch the ball. And he's... Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, you know, disappointing. But at the same time, you know, rookie six round pick. Um, I, I think he's still, he still seems to be a gem from that perspective, um, just as a pure running back. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Aaron Jones, when healthy, like anything, guy's probably a top three back, let alone top five back in the league. But he's proven he can't stay healthy. I mean, every even I was yelling at McCarthy last year. Why are you not feeding this guy? And then you start feeding him, and he got I hurt. See why? He yeah. can't take more than what fifteen touches a game. I don't think he can. I, I've touched on this many times, um, maybe a few times in my blogs, but like um, that's why this this off season strengthening the depth behind. Uh, Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams was very important because here we are in training camp and we haven't even played one game and both of them are hurt. So yeah, no, what do you have behind them? You have a six round draft pick and, you know, an undrafted free agent. Um, so it was very important to fill that role. And they did with Dexter Williams. Uh, but then behind him, I mean, there's Troy Carson. I just don't see him as more of a, a guy. fringe guy, you know? Um, yeah, he's a guy or Jag as, you know, Michael Rodney calls <laughs> just a him. Guy. It's a you good know? term. So just and, if you want to run the ball like as much as they want to, you can't go into the year with just three running backs. You know, they're going to have to keep four with the way. Um, well, they got 19 fullbacks. Just plug them in. <laughs> they just, did you hear they signed a new one yeah. today? Well, Danny Vitale, who I mentioned, is that like Vitale? He's, yeah, he's, he's probably, and I'm not even kidding, he's probably been the most impressive player on the whole team in, in training camp on both sides. The freaking yeah. fullback, which is, it's kind of interesting to say, but, but yeah, he's hurt. He hurt his calf. So, I mean, I guess it'll be an integral. It, it's, it's almost like, you know, obviously you get the feeling that Lafleur is going to install this like power run game in some respect with obviously some options to, to take some passes here out of the backfield and whatnot. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, I remember the, the, the joke was, you know, some full back, some 
teams don't even have a freaking fullback. And even under McCarthy, the Packers would have like three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like they love their fullbacks, no matter who their coach is. But um, I th- it's almost like so Danny Vitale is your, your most impressive, you know, air quotes, player during training camp. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll throw another player out there who's had a tremendous training camp, and that's Tony Brown, the defensive back, um, second-year defensive back that they had from last year. Uh, he's went up against DeAndre Hopkins, who's unquestionably well, the one of the— practice with the Texans. Yeah, unquestionably probably one of the top five wide receivers in the league, and uh, from everything I've read, he heard about, or he held up really well. Um, so, you know, he's having a great training camp as well. And I think the defensive backs, the secondary is another position that we're talking about where depth is quite perilous. If, if we lose Kevin Kane, for example, um, you know, for an extended period of time or even Jair Alexander. So that's um, all they really got is Jair Alexander. Who do they got? I mean, Kevin King, you can't count on a guy. I don't care what you said. You can't. If yeah. it's him and Kevin King, even that's kind of, mm, that's okay. But you got Jair Alexander, and then Tremont Williams, love you, but he's 38. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they got some issues there. I agree. Now, Brown, was he uh, – I can't remember. Is he a draft pick or is he undrafted? Undrafted out of the University of Alabama. Alabama uh, ah, Nick Saban okay. protege. But do you remember who else I had just mentioned was undrafted? By the Houston Texans. Tremont Williams. And yeah. then they cut him, and the Packers picked him up. The rest is history. Yeah. Man, again, that remember that run he went on during the Super Bowl in the playoffs? Oh. That was one of the best cornerback play in, in a, like a three- or four-game stretch I've ever seen. He was mm-hmm. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I love Tremont, but, yeah, I mean, he's 3 you know. Yeah. He's, so. mm-hmm. You know, and this is this is the cards we're dealt with. We're, we're, we're dealt with having a late 30s cornerback and uh, – Tony Brown, um, Kadar Holman, who could be pushed into duty quicker than what he should be. Um, and then, well, you know, Josh Jackson has been hurt. Uh, I don't think he's he came tried. back, but he's been hurt. Yeah. Yeah, but he's been hurt. You're right. He hasn't practiced more than a handful of practices. And he's, I mean, he's only, he's, it's the second year this year. It's still the jury's out, but I don't know, you know. They've been a mess at cornerback, too. You know, inside linebacker, cornerback, and I guess backup quarterback have been just a freaking quagmire. Well, cons- yeah, I would agree. But considering what they've invested in cornerbacks, that has been the huge letdown. Because I, I agree. How, you know, how many times over the years have they invested their first two draft picks? Yeah. And are and, those guys even here anymore? You know, I mean, and you, you can even throw in, yeah, you can throw in, you know, defensive backs, not just cornerbacks. So like, ha ha, Glenn Dix, um, Demarius Randall, mm-hmm. they put him out of position. Yeah. That's yeah. he, they, they're saying he might be like a pro bowl safety in Cleveland, the way he's, I mean, it's Cleveland or whatever, but he's obviously a safety. They well, that. If you, if you follow him on Twitter, he is definitely a Pro Bowl safety. So. <laughs> <laughs> but they did have him out of position. Really? That's just, you, no doubt. No doubt. I mean. No doubt. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they had Demarius Randall and Quentin Rollins, you know, who were their top two picks. Ooh, Quentin, uh, that's right. God. And then, you know who else they had sitting in the barn and they did let him walk? Casey Hayward, who's a freaking Pro Bowl. They let a, yeah. It, yeah, I already harped on that. Micah Hyde. <laughs> Micah Hyde and Casey Hayward, man, did they screw that up. They drafted him, they developed him, and then they let him walk. Oh, they, they, they didn't play uh, Casey um, in a position of strength. Like, they played oh. him in slot. Yes. You know, because they, they were worried get, about his feet on the covered. outside. And here he's out there covering Tyreek Hill, for crying out loud. I know. You know? But, you know, I, I, was, I was one of the guys that when they let him go, I was like, it wasn't a big loss. Just because of how they used him. Casey um, Hayward. Um, if they used him the way that they should have been, whereas you put him on your on the best receiver and you let him just go town on town on him, uh, kind of like they did with Sam Shields, then he would have been a great pickup. But for what they were using him for, what was the point of even keeping him around? You know, yeah. Micah Hyde, another guy. But um, I, I blame was, Capers and Thompson and McCarthy. I blame them all for that. Oh yeah, and Hyde. I mean, Jesus, Hyde's like he's he, he was a Pro Bowl safety for 
Buffalo, wasn't he? I think he made the Pro Bowl. First year. First year he was there. I don't know. Yeah. I'm stuck in the past on this guy. we got to move on, right? Whole new regime. Whole new regime. Yep. Um, That's what you wanted. (laughs) I got what I wanted, baby. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So now we're into um, Aaron Rodgers isn't a fan of joint practices. He made a comment. Um, and this was based around uh, the fact that uh, Trevor Davis got hurt on a live kickoff drill. And Trevor Davis had actually been having a pretty good camp as their return guy. And not, maybe even receiver, mostly mm-hmm. return guy. I think. But anyway, um, they did a live, you know, full speed kickoff thing. And I think he got like a someone's quad or something. And Rodgers was obviously not happy about that. And I think the last time they had a joint practice was like 10 years ago. So he came out of the media and said, I'm not, you know, fan of this and you could see why but then um they interviewed uh the floor about it and he said well you know he's entitled to his opinion this is essentially i'm paraphrasing um he's entitled to his opinion but there's value for the other 10 players that are on the field for these joint practices <laughs> so um uh, you know i could kind of see both sides i to me i don't know why rogers was basically questioning why you would have a live kickoff drill in in practice anyway, because I guess that's going the way the dodo. It's, a, it's a, the most dangerous play they call it in football or whatever. But Trevor Davis, I mean, from what I can recall with him, too, he, he wasn't the most healthy guy either. He was kind of banged up here and there, too. I mean, they didn't, you know, they didn't give him a lot of chance to get on the field. But even when he did, he I remember he, he had a very thin frame. And I think he still he might have packed on some bolt. But, um, yeah, I don't know what, what, what you think about I don't really care. I, to be honest, with about the. You know. Well, I think Aaron. I think he was speaking more towards the fact that they were not calling plays that they're going to be running on offense. Like they were making it very vanilla. Um, and I think Aaron is just like, I don't care if we're doing a joint practice. Let's call the offense that we're going to actually run this year and not hide it from a team that we're not even going to play this year. That's a good um, point. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I, I can see Aaron's point. He's a competitor. He wants to get better. And obviously this team has missed the playoffs t- the past two years. They don't have anything to hold back. They have everything to put into the kitty and, and start playing yeah. some ball, you know. So I agree yeah. with him in that respect. I really do. No, that's um, a good point. That's a good point. It, you know, you could be. Well, was, that, was that his whole point, though? Do you it was think? part of it. It was part it was of part it. Of it. It was. It was part of it. I mean, he didn't want to see I mean, Davis uh, get hurt. But, right. but I. To Jeremy's point, you know, they're installing a new offense. They got a whole new regime, yeah. they got all that stuff. And it's an AFC opponent. Like, like he said, it's not even in conference. You know, they got, they got to get, uh, get up to speed on the whole system and everything. So and I, from what, uh, you know, I was referring so, to uh, Jeremy said that so, they, they were playing super vanilla against the Texans. Yeah. I mean, so in that regard, I, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I, I just, um, I, I, it's hard to, uh, I don't know. I, they don't have a lot of opportunities to practice. And if he's just saying that he wants to be injury averse, you know, like that's, I don't know. Um, well, that, it was more that didn't seem to be enough. Play. It was a specific play. I should say that. Yeah. The, the yeah. kickoff live kickoff play. Um, so they that, don't. Pra- was, I don't think a lot of teams practice that, to be honest. So I, I didn't see any details. All I saw is that he just, you know, I saw the little news clip. He said he wasn't a fan. He kind of shrugged. Well, I, what I, happened? What happened was since they did a joint practice, you know, the Texans yeah. are pretty amped up, and they were more amped up. Right. What Lafleur had inferred too, uh, they were more right. amped up during that that play, and it. The, the Packers didn't really reciprocate with being that ready for that place. So that injury might've been no. caused by, okay. you know, yeah. I don't want to say an overzealous opponent, um, uh, that's right. a practice, but that was probably part of it. Um, yeah. and it caused it in, okay. and it, it caused an injury. Well, the Texans came into the practice and I mean, they are always known as a physical team. Um, they, they don't hold back. Um, and the very first practice they had the very first day, uh, their safety, um, laid out hit, that tight end, right? Hit our hit our uh, Jay Sternberger, laid him out, knocked his helmet off, and then that brought the whole um, teams together. Um, you know, and and then the, you know it was within the same series, somewhere in there, they had a special teams play, and uh, Trevor Davis got lit up again. Um, I I guess if anything, uh, why are we complaining about the this team um, 
getting beat up. They have been getting beat up for two years in a row. You are uh, not kidding. The fact, the fact that they're actually they, – they got pissed off that uh, Jay Sternberger got leveled is a good sign that this team actually has um, you know, some, some toughness about them or just some ability to, to back up their own teammates. Um, we should see that as a good thing. Uh, because um, and it's going football, forward. you're gonna get hurt. Right. This isn't tennis. I mean, we're not just hitting <laughs> the ball back and forth, um, or kicking a ball. But That's like a good you know, T-shirt right there, Jeremy. Absolute Packer podcast. This isn't tennis. Dot dot dot. Well, yeah, there but, you <laughs> but, oh, but, oh, but okay. So, do you feel like it puts you at a competitive disadvantage to other teams in our division, for instance, that are not? doing the same, you know, team on team practice where they are being as aggressive, you know, if we get an extra injury, I think that's that a good can, point. That, that could be a big deal. Right. I would, that's a good point. Although I would say it, it, it's almost in the perception of it. You could look at this as an opportunity that other teams don't have. So well, that's what I thought going into it. That's that my perception was that this oh. is a great thing going into it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of, I, I mean, I see both sides, but to me, like Jeremy said, this is football. You're going to get hurt, and if you're if you're trying to be contact averse and you're trying to beat around the bush of, of not playing to even if it's training camp, I get that. On uh, the CBA, it's like this is freaking football, man. You know, injuries happen, and you know, you make an interesting point there too, Jeremy. Where it's you know, I I haven't really thought about it from that perspective, but I think there's it, it's always tough to label a team an NFL team as kind of soft, soft. but the Packers. We're kind of soft. I mean, look at when everything came out with McCarthy and how they were. It was like club med out there and everything was all cushy. And you know what I mean? They were kind of a soft team. And so sometimes just getting punched in the mouth is, again, how depending on how you look at it, uh, the perception of it. So, um, you know, kind of is what it is. But I mean, honestly, if, if I were a coach, I'd be having joint practices every single year. Um, yeah. I think number I one, would too. Number one, you're always going to have injuries in football. Um, in any yeah. professional sport, you're going to have injuries. Um, so then right. that puts the onus on the general manager to make sure he's got good depth behind his starters, um, which right now, you know, I mean, there's questionable areas behind the, behind the starters on this team. So, you know, but number two, um, it brings out a competitive spirit that you're never going to bring out in any other practice. I mean, when, no you're, when you're going up against your own guys, it, no doubt. it gets monotonous, it gets boring. And then to a point where some guys just get so ticked off where they just they literally get into fights all the damn time. Yeah, They got into and fights the co- with the other p- team, uh, the very yeah. first practice against the Texans. And I think that's a good thing. You know, yeah. we saw and that I mean, they're, they're not willing to keep on taking the punches in the mouth. They're willing to take the or give the punch up and, and punch the, t- the opponent back. So good sign for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. when you look at yeah. the... Um, you know, when, you, when you're practicing against, when the, when the Packers offense is practicing against the uh, Packers defense and vice versa, you know the coaches are in both their ears saying, look, right. the last thing I want you to do is hurt the other guy. They're, getting, they're in their ear on that. So when the other team's in there, nobody, <laughs> nobody's really in their ear on that. Yeah. And it's, it's more quote-unquote game-like. So, yeah, it's, right. uh, I don't know, uh, to me yeah. it's kind of like it's boo-hoo. This team has a huge transformation to make. Like I said, we were known as a very soft team. Um, we've soft got just softened, soft, and, soft in general, soft and board. simple, just a right. simple. Team. You know, so we have a huge transformation to make, and it's not going to happen in a year, but it has to start happening right now, where uh, we start taking things serious. And I, you know, next year we got to find somebody else that will want to do a dual practice with us. I really believe in that, and it has to be somebody that is willing to punch you in the mouth like the Texans. I think this couldn't have been you a better... You know who it should be. You know who it should be. Oh, no. No. The Patriots. <laughs> the absolute Patriot <laughs> podcast. Got to mention but, them. But, but why would they do that? They did with the Lions. No. I don't know. And it's, they... In a way, they, how do... Yeah, how do they find out who does joint practices? How does that get chosen? I don't know. It's a team. Yeah. It's it's it, up upstairs. It's it's decided up there. Murphy Murphy's in charge. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good guns. Good guns in the floor. Yeah, I hear you. And I mean the league in some respects. I imagine they're like, okay, let's have them do whatever. But okay, enough about that. No more Patriots. Um, <laughs> okay, so you know, speaking of Rogers having an issue with 
you know, the practice and then LaFleur coming out saying, well, there's still benefit because of this. You know, I, I see this narrative coming out. And it's coming out from some of the usual suspects on the blogosphere, but the, there's a quote, rift. Or, you know, there's tension already between Rodgers and LaFleur. I think it's a bunch of crap, personally. That uh, that guy who was at um, Florio in Pro Football Talk, he's oh, always, he God. hates the Packers. He's yeah. just always finding stuff to do in there. But, um, you know, some of it that's coming out where Rodgers made the comment where he's, you know, um, I'm not going to throw away 11 years of what I've learned. Uh, and, you know, changing plays at the line. LaFleur had kind of insinuated that he wants, you know, he doesn't give the qu- quarterback full authority to do this. And so they were going, how are they going to do this, that, and the other? I mean, some of it's just, it's like, well, you've had one preseason game. They're still feeling each other out. They're trying to figure all that out. Make this comment at the end of the year, maybe. Right now, it's, you know, I think there there's an element of what do you call it, healthy tension. Is, is probably good. Um, there was tension with McCarthy and Rodgers, but that was the, the wrong kind of tension, and everybody knew it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just didn't pass the smell test. I think it's just much ado about, about nothing, but it's already, it's gaining traction here and there, you know, this, this narrative. And I think it's just, I mean, I'm sure there's things a little here and there, but, and even LaFleur is making kind of funny comments. He's like, you know, somebody, somebody mentioned something at one of these press conferences, and he goes, oh, Aaron, I don't talk to him anymore. And he's like, no, I'm just kidding, you know. So it's good to, to see somebody with uh, have a sense of humor like that. Too. Trust me, they're they're playing it up, and and, it's, and especially Aaron is playing this up. I mean, he's That's just, true. He, you know, when he goes home from practice after, he, oh yeah, when he goes home from a practice and and he just sits back and he laughs like, dude, I got them, you know. Because yeah. think about this, Aaron Rodgers is cracking jokes at practice. He's pulling down people's pants. Uh, he's doing the breath. Kind of stuff that what you know. That? Far- Whose pants did he pull down? Uh, I don't. Somebody. I don't know. <laughs> he's he's kicking he's, Le- he's, he's kicking the floor in the in the busted leg. No. <laughs> 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 he's letting the tires out on his golf cart. Or he's letting the air out on the tires of his golf cart. No, I. You know, honestly, I the people that think that there's bad blood or whatever already are the ones that are just purely bored with what's going on. I mean, honestly, they're just trying to find something to stir the pot. I agree. You know what? I I mean, I don't, we don't really know a ton about LaFleur already, but one thing I like, I mean, he's got a cool demeanor. He, I remember when he he had the first press conference after he got hired, man, he looked like he was above, he was out over his skis. He was, and he's he's changed a lot. I mean, he's getting it's you know it's a big thing obviously to be first head coaching hire in the Green Bay Packers, a huge brand and all that and he, uh, team. But he, I like what I'm seeing, and it's just it's such a uh, you know it's it's so different from McCarthy. McCarthy is just surly as all hell all the time, and so damn serious. And Lafleur seems to be a little more jovial, and you know I don't know he's younger. I mean, hell, he's younger than me. Um, <laughs> crazy, he's like a year younger than me. Thirty nine. A year younger than me, it's crazy, but um, god, you're so, you're old. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> why am I on here with such an old guy? And why are you talking like a couple of like soap opera ladies? Oh, about all the gossip, <laughs> like what on earth? Who cares? You know what? I look at this like the, the like, you know what? I don't care if they hate each other. Good. Win some Super Bowls. I don't care. <laughs> Hate each other. Punch each other in the face with the, with the Super Bowl trophy. Hey, I got the Lombardi <laughs> trophy and you do not punch him in the face with it. I I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Not even one little bit. I don't care. But I didn't care. I really didn't care. I really I, I didn't care about Mike McCarthy. Like, it doesn't matter. Other than the fact that, like, it, got on my nerves if, he if stood it up it, there. And double well, down I, I, all his bullshit. Well, I th- I think it permeated the and whatever it was time for a change. Like he was there long enough, so like that was a different situation. But well, like that's this, my that's my point though. Lafleur's been here long enough. Time this doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I want. I think, Fred, I I want think you've Fox been here Fox. long enough. I think it's time for a change. <laughs> I tried pawning you off onto that girl tonight. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I got a guy who does podcasts. I think oh, you I should join yours. Oh. <laughs> oh, I gotta explain myself here. No, I want Brett Favre to come in and coach, and the Florida to be the. Oh my god! 
No, it's we need football to get here. Non preseason, we need regular season football to get here. So, I agree. So you okay. want to hit your last bullet? Hit your last yeah. bullet. Let's close this out. Yeah, agreed. So, Mason Crosby's been the kicker for ten years, maybe no longer than that. He 2007, I think. So we're talking. This is his 12th year, 12th, 13th year. Um, he makes a shitload of money. And I want to say he's he's he might be the most. Uh, he's got to be top three salary for kicker in the league. Um, and he's you know top cap number even on the team. And he's been pretty poor the past few years. And I guess you know Gutekunst. Um, the, the word came out that they were interested in trading for this kicker who was with the Ravens. He ended up getting traded to, uh, uh, was it the Vikings? Vikings. The Vikings picked him up, but the, it came out that the Packers were interested. So um, I think, you know, Crosby's on a short lease. He was responsible for three defeats last year. I mean, you're talking they could have been 10 and 6 instead of whatever, 7, 9, and 1 or whatever the hell they were. But, um, you know, he stunk last year. And he has not been you know, living up to his salary for years, in my opinion. He's a freaking kicker. Um, so it, it's interesting, you know, they didn't pull off the trade, but it's interesting that, you know, Gutekunst is, you know, exploring being, you know, uh, moving on from him because I don't know. I, I, I'll leave it with this. Bad teams blame their kickers for a poor season. There's truth in that. Um, oh, there's a ton of truth to that. Yeah. But, but all needed, the other things were true, too, though. <laughs> yeah, right. He had a right. game last year, if I recall. He missed five. Was it five field goals? Against the Tri. That has to be an NFL record for one game. No. Okay, tied record. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, looking for, but, I, but, I mean, seriously, it's like the Packers are that under the old regime, if you will. You know, they – they stuck with Crosby through thick and thin. And there was that time in 2012, I think it was, where he had a horrible season. They stuck with him and he came and he turned around and he, he did pretty well. But I don't think he's ever even been in like top half of the league in, in field goal percentage. So, I mean, yeah, we're talking about a kicker. But at the same time, he is, you know, I think other teams, you know, better teams would have just, they would have moved on or they would have taken, you know, a salary cut or something, you know? So, I don't know. I, anyway, it was just interesting that it came out that the Packers almost did trade for this guy. They tried to. I think yeah. we need to. I think we need to to, to like get out get out on the in the uh, the 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 mystery verse that we're we're interested in all sorts of players, uh, just so the Vikings just uh, pick pick up you know everybody because yeah. you know they they want whoever we're interested in. <laughs> Pat Thompson <laughs> their paper bag with all these you know us looking at other players. Just think about that. It's crazy. You know? Well, well, here's. <laughs> Here's what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up with Mason Crosby getting cut, signing with the Chicago Bears, and then he beats us. I know. I, NFC North. I Don't know. Say I, call I know. Them. You're right. I you're right. never liked you. You're right. <laughs> you never will. <laughs> Caddy Shack, man. Don't you remember that? He goes, talking to Cat, uh, what's it, Chevy Chase. He's like, Ty, your dad and I built this club. I'm old, dad- dude. My dad never liked you. I quote that movie 20 times a day. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Well, that's all I got, gentlemen. Um, all, right. all right. So I just have, yeah, a, couple, I have a couple quick things. All right. If you got any, go, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to defer to you. Oh, no. That's oh, weird. weird. Uh, so so uh, we, we, we are, are on, on, on uh, a new, new podcast podcast platform, platform called Breaker. Breaker. In addition to this, we've been on this for a while. For a while. Uh, and and, and, uh, and uh, sort of a sort of Slack channel, channel uh, uh, that, that you guys are invited, are invited into. Uh, so uh, so the, the, the Facebook, Facebook chat up with uh, Dakota, I, I was thinking, you know, wouldn't it be great if we had a whole bunch of people and had a, you know, big old chat. Fest and uh, Slack is a great thing for that. And I'm on Slack 
with a bunch of other podcasts and uh some of the some of the chat things are really great and uh and i'm like why isn't this there and why don't we invite a bunch of other people so uh so that's so that's that and uh so i I put that out on facebook before i should get that out on twitter and if you guys want to promote that i think that'd be great um so if anybody want if anybody wants to get in on that uh, it's absolutepacker.slack.com if they can't just get into it uh, they can email fans at, at absolutepacker.com and I'll make sure that they can get in. Can we put um, any kind sure of uh, link on our website to that? Well, uh, we can. It's like a temporary thing, though. It's weird. Yeah, so it's right. like the, the, the <laughs> actual like invite code is like temporary. I think it might be 30 days. So, so I guess I could probably put it on there. So, yeah, so why don't you just uh, yeah go to the website. I'll make sure it's on there. Uh, go to the website, scroll to the bottom. I'll make sure there's a link at the bottom. So go to the Slack from there. I'll just have to remember to take take it off in 30 days. <laughs> set an alarm, baby. That's yeah. what I, I set alarms for everything. Yeah, yeah. See, you're smart. You're yeah. smart. Hey, Andy. Uh, let, yeah, let, so let, that, let, let, yeah. Let's test up? Andy's smartness. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Who, who do we play this Thursday? <sighs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> it's preseason. A team. Still. An NFL team. Absolute Packer Podcast. It's yeah. named Absolute Packer Podcast because we love the Packers. Come on. I have work to do. I'm, Who the hell do we play? No, we play the ball. We're, go, we're going there. It's an away game. They talked about it for oh, yeah. oh, that's right. You didn't watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to hear the end of this, Andy. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I'm in a band. It's like if I showed up to a, to a band and uh, I didn't have an instrument. <laughs> exactly. you know, I'd be like, I'm in the band. Right uh, here. I'll pretend to play. I you know, play bass. Play bass. Play bass. But really, really, really wine. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go make fun of yourself. But I owned it. I own it, baby. Yeah. I gotta. Yeah. No. I have to get back into regular season form. I am. In, I'm not even in preseason form. I'm in like freaking waiver wire, about to be kicked out of the league form right now. <laughs> I think we I think we should get together and we should watch the game together, guys. That's a good idea. We haven't done that in a while. Mm-hmm. Just cool. whatever, we, even for half of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get. You I get got on, a little. You get on me. I got a little bit. bored with it too. I got a little bored with the last one too. I'm sorry. Get together and watch. I don't know, maybe five minutes. Goobers. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. All right, so uh, go back, go. Go back, go. Go back, go. Yep. Podcast, podcast. Chair. I know, right?